Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to, for listening in my very short webinar on some tips and tricks in syndactyly surgery. Now, syndactyly is a very, very difficult topic, although it sounds simple and a lot of people do it. When you look on the internet, there are more than 200 hits on different types of surgical techniques with graft, without grafts, and so on and so on. Unfortunately, it's also very highly emotional topic among um, congenital hand surgeons. And most of the surgeons will, once comfortable with their own technique, defend their own technique to, by all means. But why is it so difficult? Because patients are all different. So we can't use the same technique for all patients. Patients have different skin colors. You can see dark skin, light skin, dark palm, the light palm. And there's a wide diversity of the condition. You see a simple um, syndactyly or what is called simple and more complex types. Now, the one single philosophy that I believe is so important is that the operated side must look better than before. And also like for like is so important, the color match of the skin grafts, there shouldn't be any hair growth on skin grafts like pubic hair. And the donor side should be very inconspicuous. There should not be obvious scarring. And the same on the dorsum of the hand. And we should attempt to anatomically reconstruct the web space. But equally, a wise surgeon will also anticipate outcome and counsel parents. We can't achieve everything. And we a lot of times know that there will be expected deformity after separation and there will be follow-up surgery. And then sometimes we cannot achieve the impossible, which means if joints are moving, they will not move after the surgery either. So each technique that you use, and I will not go into the description which technique is the best because frankly, I don't know, should be judged against how does the web space look? Does it make it look almost normal? Are there visible scars on the dorsum of the hand? Less is more here. Are the grafts color match? Is there hair growth? You don't want hair growth. Is the donor side good looking? Is the nail fold good? Um, one of the tips and I've learned, uh, uh, so sorry, uh, over the past years is to mark the web arches. Uh, you see it's almost rounded and the third web service is the highest and the most narrow one. And uh, you can see this in one of our techniques. Please don't look at the technique itself, just at the arches. I always mark the arches, makes it a lot easier for me to determine the location. And when I was younger, I didn't do it. And that was the result. You see web space too deep and too wide. A normal web uh, is about Gothic arch shaped and uh, there's a junction of glabrous and pigmented skin which slopes about 40 degrees. The skin color when you look at your own hand is somewhere in between the dorsum and the palm. And this is the 100 million Bitcoin question, how which flap makes it almost look like a normal web space. Here's the dorsum of the hand, here's the palm, and that is the form of a web space. So next time, look at your own hands. You will always need more skin and where you can take it uh, from the dorsum of the hand, you can equally take it as a skin graft or you can take a dermal substitute, but there will be a need for more skin. The dorsum of the hand will give you more visible scars on the dorsum. The groin will give you pigmentation difference, darker hair uh, and dark hair. And the anticubital fossa and the wrist crease is only a limited amount of skin. If you put skin grafts in, make sure that you don't place them into visible places like here where the skin graft is quite visible and actually not very pleasant looking. This is one of our techniques that we use in fair skin color dorsum and fair skin of the palm, so a palm of flap. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is the very narrow angle, the zigzag flaps and the Bukramko type nail fold flaps. Now the zigzag flaps result in almost horizontal scarring, which disappear in the skin folds later on. on in contrast, if you use very broad zigzag flaps, they will leave 
oblique scars, which are much more visible. And when you raise the pop flap, leave as much fat attached to the flaps because that will give you a very nice nail fold. And here's a result after one year, quite reasonable, uh, but obviously you still see some scarring. If we talk about deformity, there is a primary deformity, which is mainly after complicated bone structures and secondary deformity, which can be avoidable. I'll show you one case. And sometimes it's non-avoidable and then you might need secondary surgery. This a patient here, a bit's hand after a separation uh, done in a, a different hospital, shows a deviation here at the joint. And in some cases, do think about placing a stabilizing suture during the primary surgery as you might avoid this type of secondary deviation. Later on here, we had to do a joint fusion. Now, in this case, obviously, this is a wanted uh, deviation. This is something that you want. Do not straighten the index finger because it will aid the pinch grip with the thumb. And if the parents ask you about it, defer the question until the child is older and the child can make their own decision whether it wants the index finger straightened or not. Here's a rotational deformity. Definitely tell the parents that this deformity will not be corrected after separation, but it will need further surgery later on. And complex polysyndactyly, very, very difficult um, condition. If they're primarily flexed, you will not get them straight without a significant bony um, and shortening and straightening, very, very complicated. And at the moment, I'm almost in the state where I believe that sometimes um, we should not separate complex polysyndactylies, but leave it until the children are much older and they might need um, joint fusions to, to uh, shorten the fingers and straighten them. And that could be left for the children to decide as you not necessarily make it always better. Beware of macrodactyly. This is a patient of mine with a very subtle dorsal macrodactyly, which I didn't recognize in time. And I only recognized it after a completely unsuccessful normal syndactyly separation. And this patient started over the next couple of weeks to develop this horrible keloid, which had to be treated with methotrexate. I only learned about it after um, reading two articles from Mary Beth Azaki and Michael Tonkin, that this is a very frequent complication in patients with subtle macrodactyly and syndactyly. Think metotrexate treatment here. Our technique in Birmingham is that you need to do, know at least two techniques, a palmer and a dorsal flap, and you adapt it to the patient. So is there anything like a gold standard for syndactyly release? Obviously not. You have to adapt the technique to the patient and a wise surgeon will know several techniques. Thank you very much for your attendance. Vipin. Yeah, I, it was an excellent talk, madam. I want to ask you one question. If there is an absent middle phalanx, like a symbrachidactyly uh, and two fingers are joined, how do you uh, really design your dorsal flap for the web or what flap you design if there is a uh, because uh, in a traditional syndactyly we take two thirds of the proximal phalanx length approximately. So in this case, what you will do. So um, if the patient, I have to go back to, to what I said before, if the patient has a light colored dorsum and a light colored palm, then I will not use a dorsal flap. I will use a palmer flap. Because with the palmer flap, I can avoid a significantly dorsal scarring. And um, I can basically um, take exactly, I, I mark my, my web spaces and I can take it down as much as I need to. If the patient has a different colored dorsum from a different colored palm, and I use a dorsal technique, then I use, then I put it in thirds. So um, the distance from the metacarpal to the PIP joint is basically, I, I, I cut it in three, so it's in thirds, and then it's a little bit above the metacarp, uh, the, the uh, head of the metacarpal, and then exactly where it's two thirds. So that is my length of the dorsal flap.